Hi everybody, Father Jim here, the mask priest, still wearing my mask, but it's a small price to pay to kind of get this pandemic under control and out of our lives so we can get back to some kind of a normal, normal living. There's a couple of things I wanted to just talk about uh, this time as we have uh, gathered now for the time of Lent. I happen to like Lent. It's, it's my favorite time of the year because uh, it's a time that's focused just on growing spiritually and growing closer to, to, to God and to his son Jesus and understanding the church more and our faith more and having more prayer life and, and all, the, all the rest. Uh, so I hope we can all take advantage of it and, you know, make grow, grow, just grow closer during these periods. Uh, one of the things that we uh, that I really, really look forward to is every, every Monday night during Lent, we have what is called The Light is On for You. And it's a wonderful idea. We've done it now for several years at every parish in the Diocese of Scranton from Monday night at 5.30 until 7. We'll have someone available, a priest available for confession. So if you don't want to go to one of us or want somebody you know, maybe you want to go to a different priest, whatever, you go to any church, any Catholic church, and there'll be a priest there from 5.30 until 7. It's a wonderful opportunity to celebrate the Sacrament of Reconciliation. So anyway, the other big news I know, I think maybe you know by now, is that um, I have received the word from the Diocese of Scranton that um, they would like me to begin my retirement uh, as a priest, an active priest, in July of 2021, this coming July. I uh, had hoped that I could stay until I was 80, <laughs> which is not until next January, so I'm only 79, but, uh, but the bishop has decided that this would be an opportune time for me to begin my retirement. But it's not just about me, it's about the diocese, it's about the parish, it's about a lot of things. Uh, as you know, we've been talking about this for years now, <clears throat> that um, there's an ongoing critical shortage of priests. Uh, we have, I think, I don't exactly know the numbers, but about eight young men in some kind of stages of formation right now and uh, there will be many retirements over the next many years. And the statistic is, it's always kind of shocking, that there will be only 40 pastors available in, the less, in 10 years or less for the entire Diocese of Scranton. And it might be important to know that the Diocese of Scranton geographically is the same size as the state of Massachusetts. It's 11, 11, 11 uh, counties and... Uh, at the moment, I think, now I could be a little wrong on the number up here, but uh, 110 parishes. So you can see, we're talking about 40 pastors and 110 parishes. So there will be, there will be changes. I don't know what they'll be, but we know there has to be. And I had an opportunity, I thought, one, one, one I'll never forget actually, before Christmas, <clears throat> Bishop Bambera wanted to meet with me. I thought, well, that's really different. <laughs> and we met <clears throat> at the Chancery Building in Scranton. <clears throat> but it wasn't a meeting, it was just a conversation, a wonderful conversation between two people. Uh, I felt very respected by him and uh, acknowledged me. And we met for two and one half hours talking about everything. And I, I came to realize of just what he's dealing with. Uh, he hit me with immense problems. I, I, I mean, ever since he became bishop, he's had one thing after another, starting out with the uh, school closings and the parish closings, the financial problems, the grand jury report, and now the pandemic. But he has a positive, hopeful attitude, and we're so blessed to have him as our as our bishop. And I, I just and I really mean that. And um, so after many hours, two hours of talking about everything, <clears throat> he said to me, well, I guess we should start talking about your retirement. And I said, well, you don't have to. I, I, that, that, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. But that was that was his thing. And I, I don't know, you know, all the details of, of the diocese and how they come to decisions, because that's not my, my area. But he did say this is an opportunity to uh, do something as far as reorganization of this part of the Diocese of Nanny Cook area. Uh, he did assure me, however, that there will be a pastor assigned here because of the um, size of the parish and because of the complexity of the parish. So that'll happen. And of course, we are now part of a, 
uh, our, our Lady on Carmel in Lake Silkworth, which is a wonderful parish and wonderful people. And I'm really, I'm really enjoying my time there. I, I really am. And the other two priests, Father Sean and Father Alcohol, feel the same way. But anyway, uh, that's what's going to happen. So it'll take place in July of 2021, this coming July. I, I'm going to say some things that I've already said in church at the at the weekend that I announced it, but um, it's very hard. Uh, it's very hard. I, I remember in in the fall when we showed the diocesan annual appeal video, and a very close priest friend of mine, a mentor really, is Monsignor Jack Bendick, and he was pastor in Pittston for 20 years, I believe, a long time. But he said something that nobody ever acknowledges, and that is, he said, you know, when you're in a parish for a while. The, the parishioners become more than parishioners. They, they become your family. You get to know them. I've, I've been part of the lives of so many people. So it's not just, you know, getting reassigned somewhere, but it's it's leaving people that you love, that you've been part of, and who invited me into their lives. So it's 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 a tough one for me. Uh, I, I, I don't mean to have a pity party out of this, but, but I just want you to know my personal feelings. And uh, I, I also, in my little spiel at the masses, and this is something for me is important. <clears throat> I think um, I think I have a connection to the people of this area because I am one of the people of this area. I grew up in Hanover Township and went to public school to Hanover High School. And uh, my, my dad and my uncles and everybody I know were coal miners. We didn't have any money, but we had lots of love and didn't know we were poor and we weren't <laughs> in many ways and uh i remember my father um was it was, ended up in the best part of his life as a, as a policeman and he uh without going into all the boring details but they the, the local police broke up their pension fund because the state was establishing a new one and my father got his fortune back from them and it was two thousand dollars and uh my dad always had a, a car that was a piece of junk because that's all he could afford. And the test for it, if he would buy it or not, was if it made the Larksville Mount, he would then buy it. And it was always a piece of junk. Well, I mean, $2,000 wouldn't buy a car today, but back then it had been pretty far. And I often thought he could have bought it and finally find a car that didn't have a rust in the bottom that was falling out or something. But he gave it to me. He gave it to me uh, to go to King's. And uh, he was re really determined to do that. And that that was important, to, uh, part, part of my memory. So, um, and, and I and I know the people of this area, the the, the, the natives, so to speak, uh, good people, good faith-filled people, good work ethic, solid people, who um, had had their values straight. straight I think I, I, maybe I'm a little prejudiced about it all, but that's what I think about them, about us, and. Uh, I think about these big churches uh, that dotted, for example, Nanny Cook. And uh, if anybody out there thinks that I went through all this organization and consolidation just as a, you know, like an administrative thing, it, 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 it broke my heart. I had many sleepless nights thinking that these um, beautiful churches that were built by immigrants who didn't have any money, but they had faith in their hearts and they wanted to do a tribute to God and they built them and they dotted Nandy Cook, and, and not, I'm just, not just Nandy Cook, but all over the valley. And now we can't keep them open. And uh, I had to stand with people twice as their beautiful church was being demolished. Horrible time. I, I could not walk, I could not drive down those streets after for maybe three months because I want to see these empty lots. So I, I hope that anybody listening to me and maybe hey, one of your churches was involved, I, I want you to know that I... I ride with you over, over these decisions. But we were diminishing in our number of people who are coming to church and uh, expenses are going up and population is going down and it just wasn't possible to keep them open anymore. And I really, really regret that. So I guess being a native son, knowing all of this and having to be involved in that really was a, a personal hurt for me. But I'll never forget, ever, ever forget that in each parish, and I can name people, so I'm not going to because I'll forget somebody. There were people whose hearts were broken, who were angry about the closing of their church. But they said to me in so many different ways, 
let's get on with it. Let's continue our parish. And they became an active part of St. Faustina. And for that, I'll be eternally grateful. Uh, I, I really, you, you, so th those who are still angry, I don't know if you're listening or not, or I hope we can reconcile. And I hope we can kind of forgive each other for mistakes that I made and you made and we all made, because that's called it part of life. But uh, I, I, I want you to know that I love you and I, I'd love to have you back into into the my, my life once again. Uh, it, it's a great loss. So anyway, uh, I think what we need to do instead of lamenting over it all is what we need to do is uh, just think about the future. I, I know we have a, a hemorrhaging of young people leaving the church, uh, not just here, but nationwide, worldwide, probably. And I think we have to deal with that. And uh, and, and these, I, just from my own experience here at Nanny Cook, these, these aren't bad young people who left the church. They're, they're good kids, young adults now, who've done good things and find people, but somehow they don't find the, the church and the faith relevant to them. And I think we need to uh, make that a priority in our in our ministry. I highly respect them. I love having them around. It's been one of my great memories of being here. I was just talking the other day, maybe 10 years ago, I don't, I don't know how long, but we had a young adult group here that was just fabulous young people. But uh, the only trouble with them, they, they grew up <laughs> and they went on, which of course is, is normal. But it was a great time. It was a wonderful experience. And I would just like to somehow, uh, you know, renew that again. So that's my rambling here, but uh, I, I put it in, in the, um, the talk I gave at church, uh, scripture. One of, one of my heroes, well, one of them is Father Alco, as you can, you can imagine, but the second one is St. Paul. I just love the guy. He was a type A personality, and he just got things done, and he, just, he, told, he, told, he told you what he felt. <clears throat> but he established a parish. They didn't call them parishes back then, but we'll just say parish, <clears throat> in the Corinth. And they became the Corinthians. And um, he was there for a while and, and did a good job. And then he had to move on for something else. And a man by the name of Apollos, I have no idea who he is, but his name is Apollos, came as the new pastor, so to speak. And then Paul starts hearing stories about, well, some people like Paul better, but others like Apollos better. And, and so they're getting a camps of Apollos people and Paul people. And Paul went to the, to the, to the ceiling. Uh, he said, it's not about me, not about him. It's about God. It's about Jesus Christ. We're just the instruments to be here to proclaim the, the gospel. And so I, I hope that uh, whoever the new pastor is will get the support of people. Uh, he has a job waiting for him and uh, needs our, our patience, our support, and mostly our prayers so that the, this wonderful parish of St. Faustina, it's getting to be, I don't know if you know it or not, but it's getting to be a legendary pa parish that they, they're, the people know about it. And, and it's, a, it's a wonderful experience to know that. And we have to keep that going. We have to keep that going for, for our young, for the next generation, and for us who are slightly over the hill, uh, we have to minister to us as well. So that's kind of it. So it'll be, it'll begin in the, um, sometime in July. I, I guess when we'll be, I don't have any details more, but I will certainly keep you all informed about it all. A couple of things that are happening the next couple of days, weeks. As you know, one of the hallmark events of our church here is the Living Way of the Cross. Been a marvelous, marvelous. We have our, our, our young people, our teenagers, presenting this story of the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus and beautiful lighting and music and costumes and great kids and it was always a great experience <clears throat> we couldn't have it last year because of the pandemic and we can't have it again this year because of the pandemic but bill barsevich has something up his sleeve i don't know what it is he won't tell me keep it a secret and that's okay of how they're going to video this i guess is the correct term and somehow put it all together and knowing Bill, he'll make it happen. And then I've already been told by Catholic Television, Dan Gallagher called me, or called Sandy actually, but she wasn't here and I got the call. 
<clears throat> that um, Catholic television of the Diocese of Scranton is open to the idea of putting it back on Catholic television. What a great thing that will be. You know, they showed the miracle of Bethlehem three times during the Advent season. And now they'll be doing the same thing with our living way of the cross. And I think that is so, so good. So just keep tuned. We'll see what Bill has up his sleeve and how he pulls all, all this off. Because his goal is to have it, to do it. But to, you know, maintain the, the, the social distancing and the masks and all the precautions that we have to take. So uh, good things are happening. Uh, I think that's about it that I can think of. Um, I, I think we... Um, covered a lot. Uh, I, I just want to thank you again. I, I'm just so amazed sometimes and blessed sometimes I think about this. Every, every day I hear some envelopes being dropped in, in the office here to the mail slot. It goes on all day long. And, uh, and you know, our, our, our collections are a little down, but uh, not much. And we are doing, we are doing well financially. And we're only about, I'm looking at our bulletin here, about maybe I think a little over $3,000 short of the goal $47,000 for the diocesan annual appeal. And so if you can help us a little bit, um, I mentioned a moment ago, Catholic television, and that's financed a, a lot by, by the diocesan annual appeal. And uh, not only do they, are they willing to show our events here, which they are, but um, our, our homebound, and a lot of people are homebound these days with the pandemic. Uh, they, they watch the Mass from uh, Alabama with uh, EWTN or at the Cathedral in Scranton. I think it's on three times a, a week, a day rather. Wonderful gift, wonderful gift that, that makes the church available to so many people. And that's one of the major, one of their major funding sources would be the diocesan annual appeal. So, uh, but again, I, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for the tremendous uh, support, financial support <clears throat> that we're getting as a parish. So we're doing well in spite of it all. We, our confirmation class is still out there doing all kinds of things. They, uh, last one was for the uh, animal shelter and I met a, a new friend called Elvira, the, the, the goat, and we became good friends. Of course, I think maybe it had something to do with the fact that I fed him, but but anyway, it was, it was wonderful and uh, our kids got a great deal of learning out of it. and and they're going to continue on. We're also, we had our first reconciliation for our second graders and, and they came and uh, it's a wonderful experience. Sometimes I wish people could, I know you can't, but share share that experience in that confessional. They're, they're so uh, so honest and so beautiful. So these are the things that, that keep me going and um, I thank you for listening. I thank you for being such faithful witnesses of the gospel and wonderful parishioners of St. Faustina. So I'm going to put my mask back on. This is a new one I want you to know. And in my mask, I will do a blessing. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, Fill our hearts with hope and love and forgiveness and unity during these very trying times. Trying times as we face changes in our parish life and continue to deal with the dark days of the pandemic. Just fill us with, with, with your presence. And we ask uh, the blessings upon all who are homebound today in this, this, this time. Those who are experiencing coronavirus those who are fearful about about it, uh, may the vaccines that, that that have been developed be be sources of hope and ways to get rid of this terrible the pandemic. So we ask God's blessing upon us all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless.